Today is February 11th, 9.38 a.m. I want to talk to you all about the power to choose, the power of a choice. We are all who <clears throat> we are conditioned to be by our parents when we step out of their guidance. And some of us may never step out of their guidance or umbrella. But even in that, it's a choice. We read certain things. We engage in certain experiences with certain people that condition our mind set to be programmed a certain way. I'm being a little redundant, but I want to really drill in that our mind is set based on the way we have programmed or ourselves or allowed ourselves to be set or programmed. I recognize Romans 12 and 2 where it says renew your mind. I recognize Proverbs uh, in all you're getting get understanding. I'll post them in the description, the scriptures. At the end of the day our mind is set based on the ear, eye, and mouth gates. These two receive only. Nothing comes out of them unless it's an infection. <laughs> wow. Um, and the mouth is a two-way gate. What we put in and what we release controls our lives. Controls our lives. What we read, what we hear what we see, what we accept in these receptions, what we sense, how we feel about a situation even as we're experiencing it, determine how we choose and ultimately determine our destination in life. Our mouth gate, your mouth is powerful. My daily prayer is Lord, fix my mouth. Twofold. One, I have not been delivered from the book of cuss. You try and hurt my kids while I'm driving, mean and running me out of the world. I may have a little anger management issue. But we all got issues. I'm just letting you know mine. Out the gate. Um, we all experience certain things based on the destination of our lives. And our destination is based on our free will for a large portion of it. Some things are beyond our control. I cannot dictate what's going on with these cars out here, but I can make prayers or confessions and affirmations to say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God bless my coming and going and things of that nature. With that being said, that's my mouth gate. And even with the two-way street, what I eat can, what I eat does dictate my life. What I eat dictates the amount of energy that I have to use for fuel. What I eat determines the health and trajectory of my life. High blood pressure, perfect blood pressure, diabetes, or not, proper blood sugar level, cholesterol, or healthy LDL and HDL label, levels. Um, 
at any rate, you, you get my point without trying to exacerbate the uh, the mouth gate. So let's move forward to what are we choosing? What are we choosing? Who are we choosing? Social media has given us a platform to voice our opinions and we choose to follow people. And even in that following, we're choosing to allow them to have input in our lives. Whether it's some physical aspect of looking at bodies over the internet or engaging in conversations or just receiving likes and hearts and complimentary clicks of approval. We have a choice to be followed or to follow. And I want to say even in having thousands of followers, people do things to be followed. The conversations that are held. Let's talk about me. <laughs> I can talk about me, but I can talk about anybody. I observe certain things in my life. And I say, okay, this is possibly how I feel about it. This is what God says about it. And may even say, this is what the world says about it or other people in my circle may say about it. But at the end of the day, my goal is to lay out some wisdom so that people can make better decisions for life that aren't always comfortable. Everything that is good for you is not always comfortable. You may have a cold and need to drink some cod liver oil, which tastes horrible, horrible. You may need to take some medicine. You may need to drink more water than you ever drank in your life to get your kidneys functioning the way they need to be. Certain things just may not be comfortable for you, but necessary for you to live. Especially when you have spent so much time playing and enjoying the pleasures of life. Whether it's food, beverage, sexual experiences, Spending money like nobody's business. Stressing out because you never knew how to live truly peaceable. Recognizing that you got an argument of the spirit and everything is up for debate instead of just trying to keep the peace. Sometimes we gotta learn when to shut up, myself included. Even with intimate friends, I have to learn when to share and when not to share to create a safe space to communicate. Shutdowns occur because things are released that make people stained from pain from a situation that caused that, 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 that from a situation that happened whatever we spoke during that time was not in line with the mindset of what was wanting to be heard at that time so we shut down because our feelings got hurt and I want to add that we don't always recognize what we do to shut people down, especially when we just 
going with the flow of things, not thinking about what we're saying, which is a choice. And until you have hurt someone important to you or damaged something that was valuable to you and recognize the impact that you made on a situation, you may never be responsible for a reckless mouth that keeps causing crashes and pileups based on you not wanting to be responsible for what you said. I recognize people often these days don't want to take responsibility for what they say. They hide behind aliases or text messages or phone calls or social media to say whatever they want to say because they're never in front of the person and have to deal with the consequences of them going off in front of that person because they know there will be consequences and repercussions. I've learned that whether I'm in somebody's face or not, say what you need to say in an effective way that doesn't damage the, the road the bridge, the relationship. Certain things you can't take back. Even in joking, you could touch an area that's sensitive to a person and take the life out of the relationship just by hitting something that is sensitive to them. Now, there's only so much responsibility that you can take when you don't know or understand a certain thing about this person. And even with understanding it, you have to accept that this is that person. There's only so many times a person is going to, this is not biblical, but this is real. There's only so many t times a person is going to forgive you before they put a boundary around you being accessible to them, accessible to their heart, accessible to their feelings. We all have to guard our heart. And it's not about unforgiveness as much as it is as much at, as it is about recognizing you control what's inside of you and if you don't control what's inside of you you are responsible for the impact that you have on yourself and the first getting to know is to get to know yourself if you do not get to know yourself you are not taking responsibility for your mental health you should know what triggers you have you should know what things hurt you you should know what triggers you have that set you off that upset you now there are some general things that should we should all know based on societal norms no you should not cut somebody out no you should not hit somebody when angry or bullying there are certain things that no you should not do but it all goes based on how we were trained and just because i was trained a certain way does not mean that that was effective for the next person or for people in general so there are certain societal norms and even with those societal norms everybody does not agree with those for example a societal norm is that and this is a sensitive topic but i'm gonna use it is is about homosexuality now i'm gonna say this i have some friends and customers that are homosexual I have no ill will or bad feelings toward them. Some of them are some good friends. But at the same time, with a societal norm, you know, seeing people intimate in public, and even if it's not homosexual, it could be heterosexual, it's, it's not a societal a norm. It can, it can be a very... Um, It could be a situation that could cause some tension with such displays in front of minors, meaning like 
little kids, nine and under kids, 10 and under kids. And that's what I want to want to uh, highlight. But some people's mindset is that I can do whatever, whenever in front of whoever and it don't matter. Well, there are always repercussions for our actions, whether we want to take responsibility for them or not. I'll never forget. I saw a, a couple and this was at the very beginning of same-sex marriages that the children were called, this is about like 20 years ago, the children were calling, and it was obviously a female, but they were calling her daddy. And I that just did not register. I mean, I didn't understand. Like I said, this was, you know, about 20 years ago or whatever, and I was just like, wow. I mean, at that time, it was a societal norm that, you know, the daddy is the male figure and the mother is the female figure. So that's why I wanted to highlight that point. And now that ch times have changed, those, the, you know, people have a right to call people whatever they want to based on how their mind is set about situations. Whereas if you go in certain areas of the world and something like that happens, a person will be killed. And we live in America, so it's a pretty liberal society where certain societies are just not that liberal. And heavy re religious areas, those norms are not so, ex in, are not um, accepted as much. But this is all based on our mindset. And let's go to another extreme. Let's look at religion. I'm not talking about a relationship with God. I'm talking about, let's look at religion. How can a parent reject their child even if their child did come out homosexual? You may not agree with the act, but to totally disassociate yourself with your child because they chose this lifestyle? I mean, you don't have to agree with everything, but I feel like you should love your child. That's what God does. That's what Jesus did. No matter what the person did, God said he'll never leave nor forsake you. And I just say, even though there may be boundaries established and saying like, hey, you may not be able to engage in whatever activity. And even if it was a heterosexual situation, you know, you may not be able to engage, but it's still our mindset. So I left these examples to get you to think about why you choose to be you. How do you choose to be you? and what makes you choose to be you. Have a good day.